date and time has come to fruition, so we're going to start the planning board meeting. Today is Thursday, July 25th, 2024. Uh, this meeting will be also a Zoom meeting. Several people in uh, Zoom chat will not be monitored. Participants who wish to speak must raise their hand icon until the chair asks them to unmute. Note this meeting is being recorded for live broadcast and televised replay by Born TV. If anyone in the audio or visual recording, please acknowledge at this time. Anybody in the audience? None? Okay. The Zoom meeting, and also those people have it, but meeting ID is 863-2213-1667. Passcode is 238-651. Again, passcode 238-651. First on the agenda would be the meeting minutes of June 27th. You should all have a copy of those in your packet. Mr. Chairman, I think the notes are complete and accurate. I move they be accepted and drafted. Second. Motion by Doc. Second by Dan. You need further discussion from the board? Mm -hmm. Requires a roll call? Yes. Yes. I was there. So abstaining. Abstain, sorry. Yes. 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 <coughs> Pass. No. Okay. Committee appointments, design review committee. Uh, there are two terms open, one for a full-time member until 2026 and one for an alternate member 2027. See Chris is here. Chris, you want to just come up to the lectern and <coughs> introduce yourself? Good evening. My name is Chris Pine. I live on Shore Road in Pocasset, and I am interested in the, the full member position on the Design Review Committee. Um, according to the, uh, the, the published charge, the film qualified for the, uh, the position. I uh, served or uh, was working with the, the design review, I'm sorry, the uh, Main Street Steering Committee during the, the park construction and uh, uh, the design of, of that. I'm a business owner in, in Picasset, not on, not on Main Street. I know there's a, a request for a, a, a landscape engineer, not exactly sure what, what, what that is. I think Doc would probably be a little bit more qualified for, for that piece of it, but I'm a Massachusetts certified landscape professional. I've got extensive knowledge of uh, uh, site water management and stormwater requirements as, as well as uh, uh, outdoor lighting requirements as well too. I uh, currently serve as a vice chair on the Zoning Board of Appeals so I do have a pretty good working understanding of our bylaws and how to, how to implement them. And uh, be glad to serve and uh, happy to answer any questions. Okay. Any questions from the board? Anybody? I'll comment that um, Maria Leva, who's a DRC member, and I worked with Chris on the Main Street Steering Committee, and we thought he was thoughtful and on point. So I think it'd be a great addition. Mm -hmm. We both agree it'd be a great addition. Mm -hmm. thank and thank you, thank you for for coming forward to do that. And I think that the more folks that we have, more cross departmentally or cross committee wise, I think will sort of help streamline a lot of our processes within town. So I think it's great. Thank you. Is there anybody else that's put in for the design review committee that's here? No? Okay. I entertain a motion that we appoint Chris. So I'll move. Second. Second. Motion by Dean, second by Catherine. Roll call? Yes. 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 Chair votes yes. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there an alternate member? We discussed this a little bit today, folks, with um, Jen in the office, and where we don't have anybody as an alternate member, I'd like to see if somebody from the board would be willing to s step up as an alternate until we get somebody else. That way, if the design review committee has to make a quorum, we'll be able to do that. Um, so if anybody else would like to just volunteer to be an alternate to that, you don't meet a lot, Doc, do you? You've got to be there during the day. That's that's the only problem. So it is the, the problem. I, I could do that, but I don't have a lot of background in the things. That's the only that's thing. Fine. Yeah. 
but I have, I'm available during the day. Anybody else interested? I would have, but I'm not available. <laughs> you are not. Eight times tough. Yeah. I make a motion we appoint Liz as the alternate member. Second yes. that. Second by Jim. You get that? Mm -hmm. okay. All in favor? Yes. 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 Unanimous. Thanks for stepping up. No, no problem. Yeah, Liz. <clears throat> okay. And on to the big fun stuff. Wildwood Lane, Stuart, uh, lot number 61, Stormwater Pier Review. Can we give us a quick rundown? Sure, I'm happy to. Uh, we, we actually have um, our engineer, uh, Deb Keller, um, online from Merrill Engineering. Um, and we also have Zachary Gless, who's the engineer from Existing Grade. Um, online as well to present their findings. Do you want to give us a quick rundown? And, and Attorney okay. Udi is yep. here as well. Hi, everyone. Nice yeah. to see you. Good to see you again. So, what's your name? Deb. Deb, you want to give us a quick rundown on what you've found? Of oh, course. Great. Um, good evening. My name is Deb Keller with Merrill Engineers and Land Surveyors. So um, working over this spring, um, we've done several uh, reviews. I think our final was our fourth uh, stormwater peer review of the plans that were submitted to the town and the board. And um, as we went through them, um, as I'm, I'm sure all of you are fully aware, uh, that this is uh, one component of a larger project. So um, with regards to the stormwater uh, for this stormwater permit, we were focused on lot 61 only and uh, looked at uh, that portion of the project to make sure that the stormwater on lot 61 met the stormwater standards uh, defined by uh, DEP. So we did go through the revised plans dated July 18th as uh, the latest that we've uh, received as well as a stormwater report. And we did have a couple of recommendations if the board um, choose to accept them as uh, conditions for the permit. Uh, one was um, just that yes, there was multiple um, soil testing done on the site, but uh, not particularly specific to the locations where the infiltration uh, structures were located. Uh, so we recommended so that we could meet that standard that uh, confirmatory uh, groundwater inspections uh, be done uh, prior to the installation at those particular locations, just uh, confirmatory. The, the soil testing that was done on the site um, shows uh, obviously uh, say, uh, very good sand permeable soils with um, no indication of groundwater uh, to the depth that they investigated, which was below the design. Um, so that would, that would be my recommendation uh, to meet that standard. As for reviewing um, the stormwater, we, they did do some changes to the study as well as add some additional drainage uh, due to the fact that some of the site had been constructed and to address some of, um, in particular, one of the driveways was already installed and paved, but the runoff tended to come on to Wildwood Lane uh, rather than be captured on site. So a proposal to put a trench drain across that driveway and collect that runoff and um, discharge it to the subsurface systems on site is now proposed. Um, ensuring that the driveway that goes off onto Ocean Pine uh, captures its runoff from the site. Uh, we looked at uh, adding some additional spot grades such that so when the contractor goes to uh, finalize the grading for that driveway entrance, there's a, um, a grade down so that water doesn't just rush off. It can be captured into the catch basin as proposed. Um, those were the two, I think, major grading uh, concerns uh, that we were looking at. We went through the stormwater standards 
and made sure that we were meeting uh, those standards with the design uh, for peak rate, uh, water quality, uh, TSS total suspended solid removal prior to the infiltration components that uh, is being dressed through a, a proposed storm sector units that will pre-treat uh, stormwater before it goes into the infiltration uh, systems. We did ask uh, for clarification in further detail, which is now provided on the plans for inspection ports so that those uh, structures could be inspected and maintained um, moving forward with the project. Uh, two, I think, more clerical items that I recommended uh, to be conditions if the uh, board cho uh, chose to do so would be um, receiving a copy of the approved uh, CGP or construction general permit from EPA for the stormwater. Um, they did give us and provide us a draft copy um, of that application, but I noted that it wasn't uh, cert officially certified yet, which means uh, it hadn't gone officially to EPA for their 14-day uh, waiting period. So it'd be great to get an email of that response back from EPA saying that they've received the application and, and now that the uh, permit is active. And that um, would apply to erosion controls um, being um, utilized on site. And additionally, they did provide um, <coughs> under standard 10 an illicit discharge compliance statement, uh, but it wasn't signed, so I just asked to have a copy of that statement signed for the record. And um, I think those are all of the major components. I, every, all of my other comments uh, have been addressed with the revised uh, plans and documents provided to the town. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions, uh, if there are any of me. Okay, thank you. We'll hear from uh, <clears throat> existing grade and see if they have any comments. Can, can you hear me? Yes, sir. <laughs> Yeah, again, this is Zach Bless from Existing Grade, one of the tonight, uh, design engineers on the site. Um, as Ms. Keller had stated, um, the, the couple recommendations to the board we're in complete agreement with, if, if that should be the uh, desire of the board. Um, again, we, we've done a very comprehensive review of this site. We have met, at this point, all of the stormwater management standards as requested and um, you know, really, really made this site kind of function the way that it was intended to. There, there's negligible runoff from this site post-design when all these uh, infiltration measures have been installed. Um, so that's kind of really all we have to say at that point. Again, I'd be happy to answer any questions from the, the board at that point. Okay. Thank you, sir. Any, Thank you. Any comments or questions from the board? Anybody had a chance to review everything here? Yeah. Council, can you tell us how your engineering design did not get implemented in front of building five. So something else got built rather than what was designed. Um, I can't speak to that. All I, what I can speak to is that the current design that was vetted by the planning board's peer review engineer meets all the applicable, meets and exceeds all the applicable standards in place for stormwater. Um, and the minor clerical conditions that engineer Keller has proposed, all of them we're absolutely fine with meeting. So my sense is that the site goes above and beyond in meeting every single applicable standard to stormwater design. And I would, if the, if, don't take my word for it, ask, ask the, your peer review engineer what she thinks to that effect. Because I think reading her letter, that's exactly what she says. Well, I have to do. Right. Anybody else from the board? Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody from the public? I'm sure there's somebody who wants to say something. Tom? Yeah, you got to come up to the lectern. Thank you. Hi, Tom LeClaire, 7 Alpine Circle. Um, first of all, thank you for doing the peer review, Ms. Keller. I appreciate every of effort you put into this because obviously we are the, the ones that feel the most impact from this stormwater runoff. Um, I guess some of my questions is that 
I see that it says comments were addressed on Merrill's assessment to this whole thing. We never got to see any of these reports until this afternoon. So I, mean, I, mean, I don't even know what you guys have in front of you as far as this stuff goes. So I kind of feel like we're in the blind on this one. So I'm hoping with what existing grade is putting on paper is not what they put on paper before. Because what they put on paper before, and I don't know if you saw anything of June 30s water runoff from Wildwood Lane, but it was pretty substantial. And we only took in 1.12 inches of water that afternoon. And it was over 45 minutes. The water breached Ocean Pines, Cir Ocean Pines Drive. It went over o 15 Ocean Pines Driveway and landed back down in the backyard of his property at four and six on my, on my yard. It never hit me because the water stopped, the rain stopped at that point. And I'm thankful for that because we would have experienced another major flood. We are right now experiencing August and September of this year coming up. And if you remember right, September of 2021, August of 2022, and September of 2023 is when we took those four major floods of my house. I am hoping that existing grade can fulfill their mission to have this executed and in place before those timelines hit us. Now, it's not a very short, long time to hit, but we've waited over a year for this. And I understand the town has done their due diligence to get these peer reviews done, and I know they're still working on one of the peer reviews going forward, but I would appreciate knowing that we're going to be protected. There are still no silt socks whatsoever on Wildwood Lane to take in the catch basins. I just got to see a video from, from June 30's drainage system that the detention pond takes in. And if you look at the drainage system that comes in from Wildwood Lane into that detention pond, it is minimal compared to what the parking lot is distributed. Minimal. And there is 20 times more water coming down Wildwood Lane over that parking lot. So I see that they're going to put a trench drain across Wildwood Lane's front <laughs> entrance near 5 and maybe a detention catch basin at the intersection of that, that mock road right now and where, where Ocean Pines meets it. I hope that those trench, those uh, leach pits that they're putting in there really holds the water that it's going to substantiate. Because once those foundations go in there and take away that temporary system that they have there now, we're screwed. We're screwed. We're going to be underwater again. And, you know, I know the last meeting we had, I was told, where am I pumping my water? I'm taking the water off of the open space, the common area that's between me and nine. And I'm distributing it to open space, or actually into my yard, under my shed. I don't know where it goes after that. I really don't care. It's not disturbing anybody. But not to be able to have an ex accessory plan for me to be able to accept Wildwood Lane's water is not fair. And if I'm going to feel this again in, our, in, in August or September of this year, it's not going to be a happy, happy person on Seven Alpine Circle. So I really, really hope that what they're saying, they, can, they have on paper, they can, they can expect to happen. Because if it doesn't, I don't know what steps I'm going to take to, to be able to try and rectify my problem. But I'm going to have to take some type of action to get answers and some type of action to get something to protect my house and my family. Anybody have any questions for me? I do. I actually have just more of a statement. So I hear what you're saying. I just received this. I haven't had a chance to, to review it yet, OK? And so but what I'm hearing is, so for me, my first reaction would be I would hold off on this until I've had time to digest it unless all of the professionals in this room support that then I would I would continue with them but you're telling me you want to move this forward August September which tells me that I should vote for this to move this forward regardless of reading no, no, this. I'm, so no, do you know what okay. I mean like I don't I want guess. to delay it and but I want to support what you're mm -hmm. saying I, so I appreciate that but again with what's taking place now I don't know where they stand on putting the next two foundations in the ground at, at Wildwood Lane but they've already started putting dirt in that area which is now going to start filling in. Who knows where the erosion control is going to go because the silt socks that they have there don't exist anymore. Well, that's what I'm saying is that's why, for me personally, unless the professionals in this room... Has, has any of these people been up that. there in the last three or four weeks so to look at what's going on? I, I, I've been by there. I'm, I'm not sure who else has. But, um, I think, um, again, for me, 
I don't trust the process because the process hasn't worked in the past. So I want to be really sure when I vote for this that we can actually follow through and make sure this happens. I don't have faith in that process right now. So I guess I need to wait to hear from everybody else um, in the room to see what, what their opinion is. I appreciate that. I mean, best management practices came into play about maybe six to eight months ago. You know, all of a sudden, silt socks showed up on, on Wild Wood Lane. They're gone. They talked about putting additional silt socks in there. Well, they're there, but if you look at them right now, they, they don't pass any type of erosion control because they're flat. And watered right now, where they put those rocks in, is just spilling right over the rocks into Wild Wood Lane. So they, you can see the erosion that's taken place up there. It's clear, it's clear as a day. I mean, I, I'm sure you guys are sick of seeing me send emails, sick of seeing me send pictures and videos, but how am I supposed to back up my defense if I have nothing to prove or show? Right. I agree with you. I think it's good that you do that because you know what? That, I mean, that's how we know. So don't feel bad about doing that because that's important. So I would delay doing this because this is, the, this is the peer at least partially a solution and it's peer reviewed as best we can. I mean, I can't go do this. You know, I, but I, I can read it and I'm, and go. That's a good. That seems like a sensible thing to do. And again, again, what you they know. excuse me, Miss Elizabeth. I don't mean to interrupt, but they did. did. I know, and I yeah. apologize. Mm -hmm. and well, next time, Tom. Next time, just check with the chair before you interrupt one of the board members. Thank you. No, that's okay. You, you finish now. Go ahead, Tom. Existing grade put all this stuff on paper years ago, and they supposedly came into compliance with everything. Merrill came through and found all these deviations with it. Merrill seems to be in compliance with, with Ocean Pines engineer as well, CEC. They seem to have kind of a, an agreement. I don't even know if they've talked or not, but they seem to understand the, the I don't want to use the word neglect, but the deficiencies that this, ta that this other engineering firm put through. As I said months back, everything looks good on paper. It does. But what's actually happening is not true. The Chronicle up in Plainville, Mass, put the Sun Chronicle put a, a, a publication out what, what their engineering company did for a big peer review type thing too. It looked great on paper. Well, you know what? The same thing happened up there. So I, I, do, I do understand that they're doing their due diligence by putting everything on paper, but until it actually meets the grounds and, and happens, I mean, someone said something earlier about, about what went under building five was, was substandard. How do we know it's not going to happen again without people following through on it and understanding it? Do, do, we, do we have people that actually go up and physically examine this to, to say, okay, you're right, you're in compliance? Yes. Yes, we do. We do. I mean, yeah. Tom, you know I go up there. I've, I've, seen, up, yes, I've, I've, go, I've gone up there on a routine basis. And some of what Merrill, the peer review people, have come out and stated is exactly what I said to all of you folks a number of meetings ago. And I think a lot of this road runoff is going to be captured if the road, when it's paved with its final coat, is pitched properly so everything diverts to the catch basins. Now, I also know that under current construction, which is going on right now, you're going to see more road runoff you're going to see more runoff from the lot than you are when the project is completed. So what we have to do is trust the engineers, and we will follow through with that. We will condition it with what Merrill has stated, um, a, a couple of the questions that she's asked uh, or suggested to us. We will include that in our final decision. Um, and then all we can do is follow through it. Now, all these conditions go into the permit. And if they don't meet the conditions, then they come back before us. Okay. We bring them back, I also, but I'd like it's to hard. Say yeah. about Go ahead, Liz. Peer review, which is peer review, is not because we think the person who did something is deficient. It's because we want to confirm, like there right. are differences sometimes right. in the way people approach things, and so we want to get a double, you know, a double whammy of confirmation yeah. and perfect it. Understood. You know, so that's what we're trying to do. You know. But my, can I speak now? Sure. My, my question now, though, is what, we, what you're saying is it, we, we want to see what the finished product can deliver. What are we going to do for the time being? 
you know, you're saying the, the final coat on the road, the resurfacing is going to change the grade. I hope it does. It has. But, but my question now is what happens to that point before that? You know, again, they had silt socks catching the drain, catching in front of all the catch basins, putting the water in the detention pond where it should go. What happened on September 10th? Well, that overflowed. It flooded out their condos. Okay. So Their attorney is here tonight, and I'm going to uh, make a... <coughs> hold on a second. I'm going to make a suggestion to the attorney that he address the developer that they reestablish those silt socks while the construction is still going on as soon as possible, like within the next 24 to 48 hours. Today's Thursday, today or tomorrow, if not by Monday. Would that be, would we be agreeable to that? Um, you know, it would be really helpful. That sounds fine. If you could have Ms. Copeland just email me specifically what you guys are looking for us to do so I could have a, so we have it in writing, we understand, there's no misunderstanding. Happy. We'll have it, she'll get that out to you tomorrow. Yeah, thanks. Okay, she's Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Yep. Um, Go ahead. Jeff Keller, I'd yep. uh, like to make a, a recommendation. So one of the uh, items that I uh, noted that we'd like to see is the CGP permit from EPA, which goes along to stormwater pollution prevention during construction. So it would be really helpful to have this document. It should outline um, to the board and everyone, the contractor, the site contractor, who is responsible for the erosion control on site. It should be inspected. Um, there's two alternatives for the permit, depending on how it's developed. They should be inspected and maintained every, at, at a minimum every two weeks. If depending on what type of erosion co controls they have, it could be every week. Um, so, and they need to keep this document on site. Their inspection logs need to be on record on site. And those are things that the board may ask of the contractor slash developer, whoever is the responsible party for that document, um, to make sure that the erosion control is being um, maintained throughout the construction process. Um, and that, and that, that's a little bit why I was being a little bit nitpicky on making sure that that docu document has been established and um, gone through the permitting process with EPA so that they have a valid active permit that um, the board and the developer and site contractor can all use to make sure that these erosion control measures are being followed through. Um, I don't know if that's helpful. But, um, As I mentioned, we're fine with that condition, so okay. we'll, we'll, we'll have Jen send that out to the developer can tomorrow. Can I make a point mm -hmm. on the application? Yeah, come on up. Thank you. Specific to what um, Maryland engineer was talking about. I believe that Again, your, na your name for the record. Uh, Craig Thank Frost, you. 17 Ocean Pines Drive. I Thank believe you, that Merrill's first peer review suggested that they get this stormwater uh, permit was dated back in March. I can't help, but when I was looking over the application, some of the downloads that were made for that permit were made on July 10th of this year. Five months later, four months, four and a half months after the fact, two weeks before the meeting tonight. I, I would be anxious to know there's no date on the application. I just wonder when they filed for the application. Understood. We can check in on that. Zachary Gless is here. Hmm? Zachary Gless is here. You can answer that. Okay. Where is he? Yeah. Top right. Zach? Oh, that's Brian Heaven. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Yep, so we, we started filling out the application when it was originally requested and uploaded the final documents needed for the review on the date that was mentioned. So it, 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 is, it was a work in progress, but everything is in and it is flagged for review through the, um, the, the controlling authority. Okay, and that's from the state Correct. DEP? Thank you. It's EPA. It's EPA. EPA. Yes, yeah. the EPA. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Dan. I just got a question. I mean, we we're talking about this one particular site, 
and I just want to know when the proposed finished date is. We talk I just, with the flooding that's continually going on. Is there a anticipated completion date, mm. so we don't have to be here a year from now? Is what I'm getting at. It's sooner the better, is what I'm hearing. I think it's safe to say, and I respect this process and what the board has required and has been give and take. But my client is ready to finish this project as, uh, to to the correct what's required as soon as possible. So the sooner the better. Um, we want to get it done. We want to get the road done. We want to get the build out done. We want to finish the units, mm -hmm. convey the units, do everything with the stormwater, and fully comply with the conditions, hopefully, that this board gives with the permit tonight. So we're ready to go, and we'll move quickly. We're on site now. Including the finished coat? Yeah. OK. Yeah, and, the, and it behooves us to get it done now, because winter's coming, right? right. I mean, it's coming. So this, you want to get it done before the colder season sets in. Right. So the, the quicker we can move forward and get, get it done, yep. the better. And then one other question I had was uh, from not from from, Mer from Merrill but uh, with Deb is would you recommend that we get the CGP in hand before they start work on it or we approve it or it's conditioned before they start work on it? Um, I think you could condition it to just have a hard uh, have the official permit. They should have their stormwater permit uh, pollution prevention plan already prepared and should be able to hand that directly off to the contractor if they haven't done it uh, done so already so that that is being followed through with. Getting the permit in hand is just confirmation that they've gone through the process with EPA to make it active. Um, and then uh, from there, you know, you can ask them for copies of their inspection reports to make sure that the inspections are being done, maintenance is being done. And if they can't, you know, provide those, then that's, that's, that's documentation that they're not meeting the requirements um, I think that might be you know sort of how we can um, keep the process moving and hopefully keep the maintenance um, of the site during construction um, going as well thank you yeah. thank Who you does those inspections? Um, Ken would you mind coming up to the building inspector is here who's been out there and he can give us an update. What is the status of the entire project through your office at this point? Uh, we've issued all the permits, but as you know, um, the permits will be on hold, uh, the occupancy, until um, further review with the board. So uh, I spoke with the Hebb brothers, contractors, and explained to them that, you know, we will release the permits, but they have to be able to comply and make, meet, you know, your requirements so then they can release it so they can have occupancy, so which he agreed on. But he also would like to make sure if he meets the requirements based on the peer review that he can allow um, uh, ap um, homeowners to be able to move in. But that's still That's in flux right now. Yeah. Right. Okay. So. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Sir? Enough. Hi, my name is Robert Rand. Uh, I live at 9B Wildwood Lane. I'm also on the board of the uh, Ocean Pines Condominium Association. And I just had a couple of quick uh, questions, I guess, for you. Um, one has to do with this uh, EPA filing. And, and, and from what Deb Keller was just saying, it seems that this is supposed to be filed and certified during construction. And it just seems to us who live nearby that a lot of these issues, such as this one, have been unresolved for months and months and months. And during this time, uh, Brian Hebb has built roughly a dozen units and is marketing them and is uh, trying to, uh, you know, our understanding is close to selling them. Um, and it just seems to us that kind of weird that such basic drainage issues would be not resolved before such a massive construction project would get underway and be built. So I'm just wondering, is, is this sort of standard operating procedure for projects of this sort that uh, the go-ahead is given to build them before issues such as this are, are resolved? Can one of you answer that? 
I, I, I would defer to the inspector of the buildings right behind you. Oh. Hi. Hi. Uh, again, Ken Murphy, Bill Commissioner. Yes, we do. Um, we'll issue a permit. That way they can start putting the foundation in so we can address any foundation or um, drainage issues. Um, as far as the building code, it's part of the process of verifying that the drainage is done correctly. Again, you know, it's not your normal um, job site, so that's why there's peer reviewers here to make sure everything is being done the um, right way. And there is agreement with the developers to make sure that the drainage is correct and they will not have occupancy. But I cannot have drainage confirmed if I don't have a foundation in. Right. And it just prolongs and prolongs. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not quite sure w that you, um, that everybody would understand the fact that if I don't have that in there, how do I confirm, you know, drainage issues over time? We have the peer <coughs> reviewer here. They're addressing the issues that are there now and they're foreseeing what's going to be built and they should be able to um, take care of these issues as we go. She also recommended that someone will be there weekly or someone could be there weekly or, or, or um, every other week, which is great because obviously um, I'm not an engineer, so having an engineer to verify exactly how the drain is going to be taken care of as, as it goes will be very helpful and make me feel comfortable knowing that you guys are comfortable with the process going forward. So right. I, I do recommend the board, if, you know, which council also, um, their lawyer mentioned, it, is a good idea having somebody there to oversee it over the next, uh, over the, the course of construction, so. Thanks, Chairman. Thanks. <clears throat> and I will say just to kind of reinforce that thought, when we get down to cases on Wildwood Lane, I think we will have a fulsome discussion of performance bonds. Yes, it helps because um, thankfully Merrill has caught a lot of different uh, issues out there, addressing, addressing them right now, but um, uh, those will change. Right. They have to they have to move forward somehow. So right. okay. thank you for clarifying that. Well, I was glad to hear Mr. Murphy uh, reaffirm that you won't issue occupancy permits until everything is all signed off right. on. And you know, it's kosher with you folks. Um Go ahead. Oh, one, one, an, another issue that I just wanted to bring up since it was mentioned was the uh, finishing the road of Wildwood Lane, the repaving of it um, with the proper crown. And according to our engineer, that could pose problems down the road in terms of with the proper crown on that road, it'll divert even more stormwater into the drainage system that we have, which could be overwhelmed, including the detention pond that ties into that drainage system. So that's one of those ifs and buts or candy and nuts, yeah, we have it, to wait until it's done. Exactly. I mean, it's kind of hypothetical at, that, at this point, but I wanted to bring that to your attention. I and will that, say, bring, okay, and I, that's I, I of, just want to oh. say when I was up there and Tom saw me up there, I went and looked at the completed areas that are paved mm -hmm. and where the, and I was up there during a rainstorm and looked at it. The roads that have been paved with the final coat are crowned properly, so they are hitting the catch basins. Whether or not when they do the final coat for the main road and it hits all the catch basins, whether the catch basins accept that or not, that's why we have peer review and existing grades. So. Right, right. And well, I, I've been out there and have seen it, and I'm sure Tom has also. During these storms, a lot of the water is bypassing the, the catch basins. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And that is when you have an active construction project, you can't expect that everything's going to work the way it's designed to until the finished project. Okay, they, can't well, put a, they can't put a, um, a top coat on while there's still construction going on. That makes no right, sense. Right, okay. I'll say this, that erosion control socks are a Band-Aid on an error. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. But that's the error is because it's an ongoing construction site. Yes. And they're moving soil around when they're digging foundations and everything else. So okay. there is... It's well, an, some, we some have to this, understand it's an ongoing project. So. Yeah. Well, some some of this runoff is hap is missing the catch basins, even like upstream from right. the you know, lot 61 there. Right. So on ocean that's, pines, and that's I not saw, active construction. I saw our ocean pine. Some of it was missing those catch basins too. Yeah. Yeah. Which sort of brings me to the last thing that I wanted to ask you folks. This is sort of tangentially related in terms of the other peer review for the 
other lots in Ocean Pines, the peer review by JC Engineers, I believe the name of the firm is. We were told that that was going to be wrapped up by mid-July. And I'm just wondering what the status of that all is now. I'm Mr. Shannon. Yeah. Okay. I'm expecting to get the report um, early next week. Early next week, mm -hmm. okay. And, and um, it's tentatively scheduled on the August 8th, the next meeting, planning oh, board agenda. Nice. Okay, can you send that to me, Jen? Uh, when we receive it. What's that? When Once it's we receive, she'll post yeah. it. When you receive it, yeah. Yeah, I'll post it online. Great, okay. Everything's online. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Craig Frost, 17 Ocean Pines Drive. So I can't help, I look at all the plans that have been out there. Buildings three, five, and seven were all designed for one top of foundation grade, but the top of foundation is a foot or better higher than what the design was. I'm not sure if there's a calibration problem with instruments or, I, I, I don't know, it just seems that you're, you're taking a hole, something that was substantially a hole in a, in a depression and have brought it up above the grade of the rest of the land around. And that's creating a lot of the problem. And that's probably why Merrill was brought in on lot 61 and why the drainage is coming off the driveway of, of uh, lot five. I looked today at the um, new site plan that I didn't realize had come out. I, I think it was dated July 3rd or first or second week in July. And apparently, I mean, the site plan originally showed that buildings one and three were going to have walkout basements behind them because it was a depression. And apparently that's all been filled in now and brought up eight or nine feet to fill it in even more. And now there's all bulkheads on all those units. It seems like they're designing one thing and they're building another thing. They're not sticking to what the plan is. The plan, I know plans have to change sometimes, but it seems there's, there's substantial changes to the plans that are taking place and there's no accountability. I still have an issue with the original site plan that was approved back in, Oct in October. The fact that existing grade brought a site plan that showed existing conditions that their own plan 10 years previous showed was not the existing conditions. That that whole property had been filled various levels, some areas over 12 feet that was filled. I think in looking at the planning board book, or excuse me, the zoning book, that there are issues with the height and setbacks because of that fill that's taken place. I brought that up at a meeting back in December. I was told by the, the chairman of the board that that was not a planning board issue, that that should go to the enforcement officer. I filed a complaint on December 10th. I've heard absolutely nothing. I, I prompted a couple of replies at various times, but n no one has addressed the direct, I, I gave examples, I gave copies of plans, and nobody's come back to me and said, hey Craig, you're wrong. I, I don't know where it stands. I don't even understand where that all stands. I, and I still say, I don't think it's a zoning, an enforcement issue. I think it's a problem with the planning board site or the site plan being the engineer is looking at two different plans, one that has a level down here and one that has a level up there of existing conditions. I, I, I just, I'd like an explanation as to exactly what's going on there and why I can't get an answer to my complaint, if I could. We'll look into it, all we can do. Thank you. Um, 
Mr. Chairman, may I ask a quick question? Ms. Walton? Um, that's actually, I actually don't know what that process is. Um, like he had just said, we you send a letter to the enforcement officer. Where does that, is that a town hall? It, where is that email directed to? And can we, you know, is that something that I know we don't, you know, should we Jen? Just say? Uh, the complaints go through our online uh, permitting system viewpoint. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they're there. Okay. Mr. Murphy, did you have a comment? Yeah. I saw him kind of getting ready to jump up. So. <laughs> well, I came tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, again, Ken Murphy, Bill Commissioner. Yes, plans do change constantly. Um, I have been in contact constantly with um, the developer, and they do get modified based on grade. Uh, Mr. Frost is right on a number of things. You know, yes, it's some of it uh, probably looked like it was kind of high, but I did address it with the developer to confirm his complaints and his issues with, you know, the uh, lot 61 and how high possibly the foundation was going to be. Um, again, developer was going to review it, make the changes, and try to adjust it. Again, I don't know what height it should have come in at, because it should have been going through um, his engineer to confirm exactly, you know, if it's going to be a foot higher, a foot lower. Um, but uh, I should address that a little bit more and review that with them, uh, Mr. Frost. And um, so, yes, that should have been addressed a little bit better on that indication. But I, again, um, the developer and I did have a number of conversations regarding uh, Mr. Frost's complaints. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, anybody else from the audience? No? Anything else? Oh, Mr. LeClaire. Tom LeClaire, 7 Alpine Circle. Um, it was mentioned by Mr. Doucette. Do you have a target date to the attorney of when you're builder is going to finish with this product, he said, as soon as possible. I understand JC Engineering has come through to do another peer review, and as Ms. Copeland said, they're hopefully going to have that report on their on her desk by mid next week. I would hope to get a copy of it as well, mm -hmm. but if they have uncontrolled findings as well as Merrill did with, with existing grades problems, and I understand, you know, they're trying to wash their hands clean of this whole previous situation with with the, the lots before lot 61 and they find all these other uncontrollable findings these conditions existed far before they were finished building those condominiums so are they going to be excused from this or are they going to have the actually have to be held accountable and fix these problems it's lot 61 of the previous conditions. previous conditions We'll review that, and uh, we'll review it with the building inspector and see what items are out of whack, if there are any, and we'll address it. Um, there is a possibility that we will request from the uh, developer a performance bond to make sure that those issues are corrected, um, any that we've already given them and any that we might give them from now going forward. Um, we'll, Tonight, the big thing for us to do is to accept the peer review, mm -hmm. which is going to set a couple of things in motion uh, for the developer and for the building inspector to check on. So all we can do is try to rely on our professionals that we request to review this. Um, as you all know, we're all lay people. We're just members of the community like you. We do the best we can. And town hall staff is very limited. Um, it seems like there's been... Uh, fairly uh, large number of exits from town hall, so it, it does happen. Uh, it happens in the summertime when a lot of stuff is going on. It makes it more difficult for everybody. Um, I'm not trying to make excuses. I'm just trying to tell you the facts. Um, so <laughs> we are on top of it. We've been listening to you folks um, on the issues. That's why we went with the peer review to make sure that somebody else is looking at it. Um, so we're going to do the best we can for you folks. We really are. Um, Just a reminder, too, that they do post that the plans will be online. 
Right. It's not going to send it to you, but you could look there. Right. The one that she, yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure. But yeah. we, re we requested these plans in the, in the past, and like the plans that appeared today, Right. It, we get received essentially just a few hours before this meeting. Right. They so it's kind of hard for us to go through 215 <laughs> pages of everything yes. and everything else. Welcome to my life. Right. Yes. They, they were just posted yesterday and they did come in uh, late, but you know, that's part of the process, so unfortunately. But thank you all. So. Sure. Let me just add one thing to your situation. I think the peer review of Wildwood Lane is going to be key for you. In your world, I think the rubber meets the road at the bottom of Wildwood Correct. Lane. And I expect a spirited discussion on that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, may I just have to say one thing? I just, after, I just after listening to everybody, and I just, I want to say that I do appreciate the peer review. And I know this has been a long process, and it has gone through multiple boards and for a long time. So, you know, with changes. But I guess now, after listening, you know, to everyone, and I, you know, have the utmost faith in Ken, that I think we just have to sort of trust the process and the peer review and this board in Ken that we're going to try to move forward and ensure that we hold head builders accountable, and we have to, you know, trust that they're done. They're they're done playing games. We're just going to get it. And do the right thing, and that's what we're hoping for. So, right. so thank you. Right. Thank you. Oh. We forgot something. One more quick thing that I forgot to mention before was that a few hours ago, I was in touch with an EPA official who said that the notice of intent had not been filed yet and therefore it's not been officially submitted and it's not until it's been officially submitted that the 14 day minimum 14 day uh, review clock starts ticking mm -hmm. so just want to bring that to your attention also uh, and I, I would sort of urge the planning board to require that to be filed with the EPA as uh, M Ms. Keller had recommended in her uh, review also okay um, Zach, do you have any, you're going to be able to get that in right away to make sure we can go forward? Absolutely. I mean, it, it has been submitted. My understanding is it's been flagged for review through the EPA, which is currently in process. And when I've done these before, sometimes it takes, you know, up, up to 14 days to get a response or approval back out of them. Um, again, as Ms. Keller has stated, that the stormwater pollution, uh, pollution and prevention plan is part of the comprehensive drainage report that was submitted. Right. Um, the developer does have a copy of that, and it's basically just a certification that that meets the requirements, which it, it does. It's a very typical kind of stormwater pollution and prevention plan that, um, you know, that, that, that can go into place tomorrow to, again, really mitigate any, any impacts that have been going on out there. Okay. Thank you. Um, anybody else from the board? No? Okay. I would um, entertain a motion that we accept the peer review report and the. Oh, Dan, did you that, have something? That, no, I. And the uh, conditions that they noted, particularly um, the planning board considers special condition to have confirmatory groundwater inspection to be completed during construction prior to the installation of drainage systems to confirm the design crowd water elevation. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one was additional spark rates have been provided to Ocean Pines gutter line along the side swales to better indicate the drainage flow towards the catch basins within the driveways. Um, additional spark grades, oh, that one was already done, and I think it was one more. And a copy of the CGP application has been provided, but it's not indicated that it has not been certified yet. That's right here. And that's already on there? It's on there. Okay, yeah. she's got that on there. So, okay. All right. On the you, deliberation you, you, sheet. Yeah. On the spark rate you were talking about, is, is that along the northern property line? Which one were you talking about? The spark rate you want to have along the gutter line? Yes, that would be on the north side. Okay. Which is in the deliberation sheet. 
Anybody want to read in the deliberation yeah. sheet? Mr. Chairman, the Planning Board has reviewed the stormwater peer review report completed by the town's peer reviewer, Merrill Engineers and Land Surveyors for the Residential Development Project by Heb Builders, Inc., located on Wildwood Lane on Sagamore Beach on Lot 61. Mr. Chairman, based on the Planning Board's review of the exhibit's testimony and the applicant expert witnesses and the record of proceedings, the Planning Board has found that the stormwater peer review report is consistent with the Town of Bourne Zoning Bylaw Section 3490 stormwater regulations. Therefore, I move to approve the stormwater peer review report in accordance with the following conditions. One, all work authorized under this approval shall be in accordance with the application, supportive materials, and testimony of the owner and its representatives. Two, prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit, submit, sub, submit the following to the Billing Department and Planning Department. The result of confirmatory groundwater inspection to be completed during construction prior to the installation of the drainage systems and to confirm the designed groundwater elevation. A copy of the certified U.S. EPA construction general permit CGP application to be on file with the town and on the premises. A copy of the stormwater pollution prevention plan, the SWPPP, and a signed copy of the illicit discharge compliance statement. And prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit, an as-built stormwater plan must be submitted to the planning board showing all appurtenances above and below ground. Thank you. There is a second on that? Second that. Second by Mr. Robinson. You get that? Okay. Okay, we'll do a um, roll call vote. I'll start on this side this time. Catherine? Yes. 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 Chair votes yes. So we'll move forward. When are we scheduled again? The first meeting in August? August 8th. August 8th, folks. I'm sure we'll see a lot of you here again. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. understanding. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. folks. Baby steps. Baby steps. It's freezing in here. I am absolutely frigid right now. Okay. They're all moving. Anybody else? Please don't go. I'll wait until. Thank you very much. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Dad. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Good time this evening. Good polar bears. So okay, they're all out. We'll move on to the last agenda item, which is the multifamily housing section 3A bylaw amendments. Jen, who's got Jen? Excuse me. Okay. Uh, I, I handed out, uh, I believe, draft uh, multifamily housing changes um, of the bylaw um, a couple of months ago, I think, and I just resent them again. Yep. And I'm not sure if um, anybody has any comments or changes to it in terms of the town meeting schedule for town meeting is scheduled for October 21st the um, warrant closes September 9th so the public hearing would have to be August 22nd to get it in the newspaper um, when's so the close of the warrant September 9th okay. and I think um, the downtown district signs um, the DRC has been working on that yeah, so presumably in final edits yes final okay. edits and so that will be um, sent out to the planning board for review before that public meeting um, and I do think that the the section of the bylaw um, really only has a few changes to it so it's very it's not very substantial um, going from 12 units to 15 units right. per acre. I did submit a pre-application to the state to make sure that we were in compliance with um, all parts of that that section of the bylaw and the amendments, and I have not heard back from them yet, so I'm going to put a call into them because I submitted it in May. So hoping to hear back soon. Um, Mr. Chairman? Mr. This gets us in line with the MBTA, correct? Correct. Okay, I just want to make sure that we all understand why. Yes. We do. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I, I agree. I, I think it's a non-substantial change. And, right. uh, do you think you have time to do the things you need to do to make it to the special town meeting? The requirement is a public hearing, which would be scheduled for August 22nd. So we should be able to get before it the warrant closes. Public meeting is the 22nd. Yeah. Public hearing. Yeah. Public hearing. Public, public hearing. hearing. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Feedback I've had from people, it's really right. doesn't seem to be a big deal. No. 
And I think it's a minor modification going from the 12 to 15. It's a 20% change, basically. Right. So I don't think it's has to go to another public hearing. I, that's minor, 20% or thereabouts. So. Yeah. Mm. All right. Um, what do we want to do on this? Everybody had a chance to review them. I know I didn't. So yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, I'd entertain a moment a uh, motion that we approve the amendments as proposed by the town planner. Uh, uh, do, you, do you want a motion to approve it, or you want to wait to the public hearing to approve it? In just in case there's any mm -hmm. questions, yeah, or we find we anything. All right. Why don't? That's a good idea. Why don't we wait and we'll approve it then? We yeah. have plenty yes, of time. Right. Yeah, then you would okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that way, if we find anything or hear anything between now and then, yeah. we can add it in or amend it or take it out, correct it, whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I think I don't want to lock us in. Good catch. You want to make a motion to put it on hold? Yeah. Uh, no, no, we, we don't even need that. No action is good action. No action is good. <laughs> okay, motion. Before, before we adjourn, um, everybody's got the book. Take a look at it. It's particularly um, the Main Street um, downtown district. Take a chance and go through it. And if okay. you see anything that we need to change, let's get working on that because as developments come through, we want to try to bring some of these things upgraded. Doc's pointed out a couple of things that he's seen when we've been in design review committee. Dan's brought out a couple of things. Um, one of them is the parking requirement in downtown. I think we need to come in compliance with basically what the Cape Cod Commission does. Yes. We have one standard, they have another. Let's and we're tougher. We're trying to bring it all together. But there is a couple of other things in the downtown district that I think were well-intentioned when we did this 20 years ago, Dan, somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, and, and we probably should look at some changes. But I think if, if you want to do that, Chris, if you want to do like a, if everybody could do like a morning, we'll get coffee and I'll, we'll put it up on the screen. I'll type. We can change it and submit something. Like just get it all yeah, done I'm just together. just thinking if everybody goes through it individually and we okay. bring all the then we can maybe do something like okay. that come the fall start to go through it because i don't okay. think we're going to have anything ready for changes to that until the spring right okay. but that'll give us all winter to go through it okay um, there's right. a lot of different things like we excluded one of the things that i can think of is um drive through windows well the intention was i understood what the intention was we didn't want burger king and chick-fil-a and everybody else going up down main street we're not seeing that but if by chance a bank came back into town, right, that would be precluded to have a drive-up window or in a bank and everybody, or a pharmacy. Right, yes. yep. so Those types of things. So instead of just having an exclusion, I think it should be case by case basis, parking requirements. But I want everybody to kind of go through it, and I think everybody, collective minds, will come up with a whole okay. bunch of different suggestions. And we'll get into it in the fall. We'll have all winter to go over it. We don't have to do it all in one fell swoop and just we'll go through it piece by piece okay. but I think if we start there and then we go through the zoning bylaw changes um, mm -hmm. you know it's going to be a benefit to the whole town so you can I make one other comment yeah. Yeah. subdivision regulations if you guys get bored we'll look at that and those can be changed here at our meeting they don't have to yes. go to town we don't meeting. have to go to town oh, meeting yeah, so that. just yeah. right if, so when you're out there comes reading up with stuff like that if they can jot it down and we can bring it up we'll have a maybe we can even have a workshop meeting instead of just a regular meeting Mr. chairman it does actually reduce it yeah this on this the for the MBTA we reduced it but yeah. I think maybe it should be further reduced yeah. for everybody yeah. let's take a look just there mm -hmm. so all right Mr. Nothing chairman does left hand down the agenda make a motion to adjourn motion second to adjourn. second aye all those in favor vote with your feet we are adjourned aye. <laughs>